Hi, I'm Jason, and this is Level Up Hobbies. Today I'm going to be working on my Warhammer 40k character series. I'm going to be building and painting the new Ultramarines Captain Uriel Ventress from the Black Library series. Now this is a famous captain uh, in the stories written by Graham McNeil. Uh, I'm excited to get this box, uh, this model open and start working on him. So let's get to work. Okay, so we've got the new Black Library Celebration 2021 figure. Um, it's the Ultramarines Captain Uriel Ventress. Um, we're going to go ahead and crack him open and let's get him put together see what we got here. A little bit different. Um, this one does not have the little plastic kind of tray that the other single flakes have been coming in. Um, has one single sprue and one 40 millimeter base. All right, doesn't look too bad. Look too difficult to put together. I'm gonna get it all cut out and then we will start start building. Okay, so I have got uh, Uriel together and I've just blue stuff, blue tacked him to the base because I'm gonna paint that separately. <laughs> and then also the backpack is just blue tacked on um, so I can paint that separately. Um, and his torso, so his arms and his cape, uh, and the back part of his torso are just stuck together. Um, well, they're all glued together one piece, and then the, his front uh, side and legs are all one piece. And I can take those apart so I can get in here and actually paint the, his cloak without, uh, uh, not damaging, but yeah, I, yeah, not getting any anything on the rest of the the armor, um, and those those pieces come up come apart uh, very easily, uh, so there's not going to be any issue with putting it together. Um, so next, I'm going to go ahead and prime this guy, and I am going to be using some. Uh, just Vallejo Black Surface Primer. And I'll get him primed up. All right, so we got Uriel um, primed. And then now I'm gonna put down uh, the starts of a, a base coat on uh, his armor. And for that, I'm using an older Citadel color. Uh, this is called Necron Abyss. Um, there's another one, uh, Moradin Blue, another foundation one. But I'm using Necron Abyss. Um, this is a very nice, like deep, deep, like dark blue. Um, uh, it's a really nice color. I used it uh, for most of my blues, actually. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and use that for a base of this armor. Um, I'm really going to try to focus on the undersides, the lower parts of the armor, because um, I want that to be a lot, a lot darker. Um, and then we'll brighten it up as we get, you know, towards the top. All right, let's go ahead and lay this down. Okay, I know I said I was just going to focus on the lower parts of uh, the model with this Necron Abyss. But as I was laying it down, um, I decided it would be a, a good just 
you know, base coat for the rest of the blues that will be applied. Um, so I went ahead and just coated the entire, uh, all of the armor uh, with this blue. All right, so now I'm going to kind of bring up that blue a little bit. Um, I'm gonna use some Citadel Kalidor Sky. And this will lighten up that deep blue that I've already added. So we've got our blue color down, and so now what I need to do is go through and I need to do some panel lining on his armor uh, to make those recesses, um, well, to provide contrast between the armor panels and the shaded areas of the recesses. So for that, I'm going to use some Citadel Contrast Leviathan Blue. This is a, a nice dark blue, and it'll provide a really good uh, shaded area. So I'm done with that pin wash, or pin line, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, um, the contrast paints are great for uh, just doing line washes. Um, I can't speak for all of them, but uh, the few that I do use for uh, pin washing, I like this one, and I'll use the Dark Angels Green uh, for my uh, Dark Angels. Um, same way, uh, doing pin washes over Caliban Green. Um, it just it adds a lot of depth with that, just that deeper uh, color. Um, so if you haven't, give it a try. Um, there's only a few that I've used. Um, I'll use some as washes, like snake bite leather. I'll wash over uh, metallics to dull those down. Uh, but yeah, just a little food for thought there. Okay, we're gonna start doing some line highlights on this uh, armor here. So for that the first highlight, we're going to be using Fenrisian Gray.
is the unhighlighted, and then the highlighted. Quite a striking dis difference. It's crazy how much those, that little bit, just adds to it. Now I'm going to do a final highlight with both one gray. And this is just going to be, I'm going to pick out some points of interest, you know, probably higher in the model. And just do a couple fine highlights, nothing. Not many at all. I'm gonna start working on his cape. Um, so he's got a, he wears a green cape, so I need to first base coat uh, the entire cape and also the trim on his pauldrons. And I'm gonna base that in Corax white. Okay, I'm going to paint his his belt and his tabard, all the little leathery bits there, with some rhinoxide. Okay, all the leather pieces are now dry, and I actually, I want this to be a little darker, and unfortunately I don't have, um, what's that next, or that darker brown for Citadel, like Dryad Bark, or I think it's Dryad Bark, um, but I mean, I like the Rhinox hide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go over all of the leather again with the Citadel Contrast Wildwood. And what's nice about these contrasts is they can act as a shade and not totally knock out the colors. So in this, in this step, I'm going to be shading and then also just deepening that brown color. All right. Okay, so the wild, uh, wildwood, uh, wildwood brown, wildwood. <laughs> Sorry. So the wildwood contrast color um, that I painted over the rhinox hide has dried, and it turned out great. It made it a really, really super deep brown, and um, just left like 
hints of that that warm Rhinox heart Rhinox hide brown and it turned out really good so now I'm gonna start highlighting that up and for that I'm going to use some Citadel Bane Blade Brown. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and paint the parts of the bodysuit that are exposed. Um, and for that, I'm just going to use some Citadel Black Templar Contrast. And these will most likely never even be seen. But I at least want to get these sides painted in here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to begin painting the exterior part of the cloak. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use my airbrush just to lay down the the base coat that I want because I, I don't know. I just think it'll take forever using my brush. Um, so what I did is I used some Vallejo's liquid mask and painted on heavily over the the pauldron and this back panel here and then this pauldron over here. And then the arms um, and the head, I'm just gonna wrap in a little bit of uh, uh, blue tape, some painter's tape, and then uh, I'll get sprayed. Okay, <clears throat> so the cape is sprayed. I sprayed it with Cabalite Green. Um, I'm showing this now because I forgot to record it. Um, so now I'm removing the, um, all of the masking fluid and then also I removed the tape, uh, that I used to mask off, uh, parts of the armor. Um, a good way to remove this masking fluid is to just take a piece of, you know, just a little dab of, uh, just like tacky putty, um, it's like poster putty and instead of using something like a toothpick or something that you're going to be you know scraping at it um because that could leave impressions in your paint that's underneath um, you can use this and if you you can see like the the shoulder pad is all green right there let me go ahead and i'll zoom in So just take the ticky ta uh, ticky tack or whatever it's called, and just rub it across it, and it will. It's sticky enough that it will grab the stickiness of the liquid mask, and they will. Well, obviously, stick to each other, and it'll pull it right off. And then you don't have to worry about damaging the paint underneath. Okay, so I'm going to start building up some uh, shading on the interior side of the cloak. And I'm going to do this now because once I get that completed, uh, the interior of the cloak, I'm going to put the body back together. And then I'll work on the exterior part of the cloak. Um, just makes it easier to handle and stuff. Um, so for the interior part of the cloak, I am not going off of how GW 
painted it. Um, I am for the majority of the model, but for, um, let's see, see they have a green interior and also a green exterior part of the cloak. And I don't know, for me, I just think it's too much green. Even though it looks like it's two different color greens, this is more of like a grass Kelly green. And then this is uh, kind of a, a turquoisey green. Um, but I'm gonna leave the interior of the cape white because I think that'll be a nice contrast between the exterior part of the cape and then also the blue armor. <clears throat> um, and then to shade that, what I'm gonna do is I am going to use some Griff Charger Gray uh, contrast paint. And then I actually, I mixed that with a little bit of Laman Medium uh, just to thin it down and make it into more of a, uh, a glaze. And then I'm just gonna start working these into the recesses of the cloak. Okay, so we've got the shadows built up on the interior part of the cloak and <clears throat> excuse me um, I think they look really good I used a uh, Griff Charger gray uh, contrast paint and it's kind of a um, I guess it's kind of like a I would say like a turquoise color um, it's a very cool gray with uh, on the green side. Um, and it I think it's gonna look really good as a shadow um, with reflected blue uh, light onto a white cloak. So that's why I went with that. Um, and now what I'm going to do is build back up those white highlighted areas. Um, so um, there's a little bit better transition and for that, I'm going to go back to my Corax White and I'm going to just thin this down uh, quite a bit. Um, and then I'm just going to glaze that uh, in the areas that I need it uh, until I'm happy with the results. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I highlighted up the white as much as I'm going to. And then um, off camera, um, I did a, just a pinstripe around the edges of the cloak, just in the same Kabbalite green that I did on the back. And then I also did this Aquila here in that green. And the only reason I did it off camera is while I'm filming, I can't get in close enough to see what I'm doing um, and be able to film it. So um, unfortunately, with my setup as it is, um, I had to do it off camera, but it turned out really well. And then here's what it's going to look like once we attach him back together. Um, as you can see, I think that shade that we used turned out really well um, with that blue. Um, and instead of the very, very green interior that they have um, on the box, I like that white with that greenish gray um, shadow. Okay, we're going to start building up some shadows in this cloak area here. And for that, I'm going to be using Stegadon Scale Green. And I'm just going to be thinning this out and glazing it into the recesses. 
just kind of as needed. Going to be uh, trimming out his shoulder pads in Caliban Green. I'm now going to highlight up the uh, trim on the shoulder pauldron with a 50-50 mix of Warpstone Glow and Moot Green. Right now I'm going to highlight those pauldrons again, just with straight moot green. Okay, now we're going to highlight the cloak with some Warpstone Glow. Okay, we're gonna start painting all of the silver pieces in some Iron Warriors. <clears throat> I like the uh, I like this new paint. It's a little bit different than Lead Belcher. I think it's a little darker, and it really really covers really well. I'm going to paint the casing of the gun in Black Templar contrast paint. We're going to go ahead and highlight the black portions um, of the model now with some administratum gray.
Okay, and now just a, uh, a brighter highlight on the black portions using both one gray. All right, we're going to highlight up the silver portions, steel portions with some rune fang steel. All right, so I'm trying this with a new light down up front, so hopefully I won't get too much shadows cast on it. Um, we're moving on to the gold uh, throughout the model. So for this, I'm going to be using Citadel Retributor Armor. And normally on my models, I don't go for I Maybe mean, I just don't really like the over-the-top gold like this, but I figure this is this is the Ultramarines. They're kind of they like all that gold and stuff. Makes them look pretty. Okay, we've got all the gold pieces painted here. And so now we're going to go ahead and wash them with some seraphim sepia. So we're going to highlight the gold portions of the armor, <coughs> armor and trim. And for that, we're going to use a pretty much an even one-to-one -one, uh, mix of Retributor armor and Vallejo Game Color silver. Okay, and now we're going to do a final uh, bright edge highlight on all of that gold with some Vallejo Game Color sil Silver. Silver. Okay, so I'm going to start laying down some color on the face, and for that I'm going to, well, I based it in some Wraithbone, um, and now I'm going to uh, just layer on some thin down Cadian Flesh Tone, um, just to build up a little bit of a base color. And this is thin down with just a little bit of water.
Okay, now we're going to shade the uh, skin tone with, uh, I'm going to use Gilliman Flesh Contrast Color. And I'm thinning this out with some contrast medium, about one to one. Okay, now we are going to, um, we're going to bring that Cadian flesh tone back up um, using, again, Cadian flesh tone. Um, and with this, we're going to just leave those crevices and those recesses. Um, we're going to leave those uh, a little darker. So these are just very, very thin down Cadian flesh tone. And I don't want to totally recoat everything. I'm just going to uh, kind of build up some layers on the, the higher, higher sections of the, the face. Alright, now we're going to add another highlight uh, onto the skin tone. Uh, this time we're using Kislev Flush. And again, this is highly diluted um, just with uh, water and a little bit of flow improver. Um, and this is going to go just a little higher than that Cadian flesh tone did, um, just to really lighten up that skin. And I mean, on the picture, they they have his skin tone going very, very pale, pale white. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go try to go that far or not. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Too much on here, I think. I'm not going to paint his hair using some black Templar contrast paint. Put some color on the base here. Um, from the picture, they keep the base looks pretty simple. Um, can't really see a detailed shot of it though, but it looks like it's over like bronze plating. Um, so what I'm gonna do is start by dry brushing it with some Warplock bronze, and we're gonna build up a little bit of that. Uh, brown tone over that black base coat there. Looks pretty good. Um, so next what I'm going to do is mix in a little bit of Balthazar Gold. with the bronze. And 
And then I'm going to do just a light dry brush of some Rune Lord Brass just to get the highlights. Okay, so we have the completed model right here. Um, I am very happy with how he turned out. The blue, I think, looks looks great. Um, this is actually the first, um, pretty sure this is the very first ultramarine that I have ever painted. So, I mean, for that, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm very happy. I made some slight changes from the box artwork. Uh, the first being the interior of the cloak. Um, they have that a, a green color and I just thought that was just too much green having a green exterior and green interior. So I switched that to white um, and I, and I uh, did a, you know, a green pinstripe around the edge and I think it turned out rather well. I'm pretty happy with that. And then another thing I changed was the uh, chest emblem. Uh, the box art has it all in gold, and I went ahead and I uh, I did the wings in in white, and I'm pretty happy with that too. Um, I like how it separates it from the rest of the gold trim. Off camera, I did a few details. The purity seals, I painted those off camera. Um, I'm sure most people have seen those painted before just I based the entire purity seal and wax part in Wraithbone and then I painted the parchment in Skeleton Horde and then highlighted it back up with Wraithbone and then the wax seal I painted with the um, Flesh Terrors contrast um, and then I highlighted it with uh, the uh, Katie and flesh tone. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I'm very happy with the result. Um, I've never really been a super fan of ultramarines, but this, I don't know, this was a lot of fun. And I mean, I could, I wouldn't mind painting up a squad of, uh, you know, intercessors or something like that just to have uh, for display. I think that would look really cool. Uh, this guy, you know, at the helm. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this, again, was the Ultramarines Captain Uriel Ventress. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me here at Level Up Hobbies as I built and painted the new Ultramarines Captain Uriel Ventress. This was a fun project for me because it pulled me out of my comfort zone and I got to paint something that's a little different than normal. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe below. And then also remember to smash that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I put out new material each week. Thanks again, and remember, build, paint, and above all, play games. Later.